All right, my new favorite sponsor on the Eric Zane Show podcast, Factor Meals. These folks got it right. Nutritious, complete, lower calorie meals, taste outstanding, and you don't have to do all the food prep work. Prepping food is a full-time job. It gets to a point where it's just not sustainable to make all of that food, put it into the containers. It takes a lot of time. And as I talked about before, if only there was a company that put together delicious, nutritious, fantastic meals, all different types of meals for you to choose from, and they package them all for you. Well, enter Factor. Oh my gosh absolute game changer when it comes to eating appropriately you know you might spend a lot of time making a great meal for you and your family all right one meal it's consistency consistency is the key to wellness if you're the type of person who's looking to uh, lose a little weight but do it the right way by eating appropriately getting the necessary exercise and things like that factor is awesome because it's such a time saver you simply grab the meals out of the fridge and off you go you can pack them for lunch you can have them for breakfast you can have them for dinner it can be on the go whatever you need factor has you covered get factor and enjoy eating well without the hassle simply choose your meals and enjoy fresh flavor pack meals delivered to your door ready in just two minutes you pop them in the microwave if you want no prep no mess and here's how you take advantage go to factormeals.com slash zane 50 use code zane 50 to get 50 percent off that's code zane 50 at factormeals.com slash zane 50 to get 50 percent off Discuss news, nonsense, and my personal adventures from right here in the Impact Power Sports studio. Impact Power Sports online at impactpowersportsmi.com. I just cannot handle that camera. It is just too, there's just too much headroom. Hang on. God's sake. Right away. All day yesterday, I talked about how the freaking Lions game was coming up on Saturday. Well, that was wrong. The game is Sunday. That makes things, well, different. I mean... It's easier to watch when it's on Sunday. But again, I just, I don't feel good about this game. I'm just going to come out and say it. They're going to lose. You know what they say? Uh, Expect the worst. Hope for the best. They're going to lose. Now, if they win, I'll be like, oh, glad I'm wrong. And off we go. But there are some really, really, really good teams in the playoffs. Dallas Cowboys are good. Green Bay Packers are on fucking fire. The Rams, even hotter. And we haven't even gotten to San Francisco yet. What a tough ass road this will be for anyone who runs the table to win the Super Bowl. And I haven't even gotten into the fact that the best team in the league is in the other conference. The Ravens who jail sexed the Lions earlier in the year. There is zero chance. I'm just going to say it right here. It all ends Sunday. All the fun, all the, uh, all the uh, you know, winning 12 wins, that's, that's impressive. It all ends Sunday. Mark it down. Lions lose big. I hate that, but it's true. Tyler says, I saw a leaked copy of the NFL script. Rams dominate. Stafford throws for 600 plus yards, five TDs. All right. That's first of all, I, um, I want to slap the shit out of you because I, I hate people that say, oh yeah, it's all fixed. It's all fixed. It's not. Okay. It's not fixed. I don't think there's any, I don't agree with any of that, but my God, I, I, so Sunday is when the game is. Easy doesn't feel great. Uh, you may have heard uh, that there is um, a snow day. Woo! No school for me to mow! Where I live. Which is uh, interesting because the roads, I mean, all the major roads are, are in fine shape. The temperature is uh, uh, not, that, uh, not that cold, so the snow was like heavy and wet and 
you know, they kind of did a great job of cleaning it all up. But uh, for whatever reason, they said, nah, fucking stay home. Stay home. And Lutz calls the snow day. Breaking news. Breaking news. That's Aiden Lynch, who I think is still in school. Stevie says main roads are fine, just wet. Side roads, slushy. Uh, Brandis says it's super gnarly here in Iowa. Two snow days for us. Now, um, I will say that as I was uh, preparing for this show today, and by the way, let me let me get this out of the way because we only have 54 minutes till my beloved dad uh, joins us. Send your questions on Dear Meathead, and we are always, always in need of questions. Eric at ericzanecho.com. For Dear Meathead with my beloved dad. Send them along, and we will chat coming up right around 9 a.m., on this live stream. Oh, um, apologies for folks who were listening to the um, audio podcast from January 9. I, uh, boy, I had a weird day yesterday. I, I uploaded that and it cut off after like an hour and 20 minutes. My bad. Somebody informed me. Thank you. If that ever happens, don't hesitate to reach out to me. I woke up this morning to uh, uh, one of the nice audience members on Patreon. I think it was John and said, Hey, uh, dude, very fraudulent free podcast cuts off and after an hour and 20 minutes and the uh, Patreon was uploaded late. All this is all me. It was a bad day, but I think we're good now. They're expecting, uh, what's known as a bomb cyclone to come attacking here. Bomb cyclone. What an, what a, what a term is uh, likely to smash into where I live here. I guess there's some big fucking storm in the Rocky Mountains right now that's tracking in a way that it's going to head right up to the Great Lakes. Look at me. I sound like a weather guy. Uh, pick up even more energy as it crosses the water. And then whammo! Uh, the, so- the storm is set to take aim right here, Friday and Saturday. A foot of snow expected in some areas, probably mine. Uh, winds Friday and Saturday expected to be uh, sustained at 20 miles an hour. Gust frequently registering in the 40 to 50 mile an hour range. That hurts. Blowing snow will likely produce blizzard-like conditions in this bomb cyclone. That terminology comes... Uh, given to a rapidly intensifying storm that undergoes a pressure drop of 24 MB or more within 24 hours. Uh, whatever, if you say so. 24 MB. I, I don't know for sure. To me, that uh, is either Milton Bradley, megabits, or perhaps millibars. But I'm not sure. One of you knows weather. It's not easy. It's not easy. <clears throat> uh, Chris says, good morning. Live as hell, man. Radio voice Lita says, Dan Campbell will find a way. He is not going to find a way. Mitch K says, are you putting a wager on it? Zane? No, I, I typically don't, don't bet. Um, I did get this bit of information that if the lions do happen to pull it out Sunday, there may be an issue with the upcoming paintball war number 23, the battle for the Rio Grande. I will keep you informed. But um, if they happen to win, which they won't, but if they happen to win, and then the following week's game on January 21 clashes with paintball war number 23, there will be an adjustment. Either a time change. Or a day change. Rick from TC Paintball said, okay, if they win, you know, this is a once a 50 to 100 year thing. Uh, I Everything is out the window. I, I'm going to be in front of the TV and I go, understood. Understood. We will see. Uh, as it stands, that event is scheduled for 5 p.m. 
on Sunday, the 21st of January. All right. We got a big fraud Saturday happening. Saturday, it'll be, who are these free beers? Ben and Eric. And uh, and then the Ben Eric Ben and Eric Patreon podcast will be happening Saturday. We haven't yet determined the time. Stay tuned. I'm guessing sometime around lunchtime. So that is coming. All of this happening as we speak. Meanwhile, in my driveway, there's half a foot of snow. And I don't know if I have the device that is uh, in working order to be able to take care of it. I took the damn snowblower and drove it to the hardware store. The place, this is one of those places where they all like know everything about everything. And I said, can you take this thing apart? And can you make it so it actually throws snow again? Well, what, what do you mean? Well, it doesn't do anything. You, you, you hit the snow and the snow flies out like one inch. It's like a, uh, a snowblower version of my dick right now. And it's shitty. Can you please, I don't know if it's a belt or something. We'll figure it out. Okay. So then, um, they call me up and they go, all right, we're done with your, uh, snowblower tune up. I go, well, I mean, I didn't want a snowblower tune up. I mean, I didn't want, they go, well, yeah, we changed the spark plug and, uh, we put a new this on it and a that on it. I go, is that going to help the, uh, ability to throw snow? And the guy says, I don't know. I go, why not? He says, because we don't have any snow to test it. And I'm like, well, yeah, I, I know that asshole. You don't need to say that, but surely you can tell if something is loose. I mean, I don't repair snow snow blowers, but I'm guessing that if you take the fucking thing apart and something's loose and you in fact tighten it, you can probably deduce that its ability to throw snow would be improved. Yay or nay. All right, come get your snow blower. So I don't know if this fucking thing works. I'm going to find out because I've got that asshole slurpy snow in the driveway right now. And I, I you, you know me, it's going to be, it, I just like the lions are going to lose Sunday. The snowblower is not going to be working the way it's supposed to. And then at that point, I may just put it out to the front of the house and with the free sign so that some loser can come through the neighborhood and take the fucking thing. And you know, these people who are losers, they drive beat up trucks, kind of like mine. And then, but they have a uh, knack for being able to repair things like this. They don't have the business acumen or the ability to spend wisely, but they can fix anything. So somebody will come to my house, put the snowblower into the back of their piece of shit truck, take it home <coughs> and then take it apart and then rebuild it. And then it'll work perfectly. It'll be like restored, which is like videos that I watch all the time. When I fall asleep, I saw some guy, he's got some beat up piece of equipment, all rusted out and you watch a five minute video and then he takes the fucking thing apart, cleans it up, puts it back together, and it works better than the day he bought it. How great are those those videos? I swear to God, I watch them all the fucking time. So, all right. That's where I sit on this, the 10th of January. Uh, Nick says, sell the snowblower, get a side-by-side with a plow from your new sponsor. You aren't kidding. Chris says, Christ, easy. You're describing me. Chris, uh, Chris has the ability to repair these things. What you need to do is you need to set up a camera and document all of that and then edit it and then post it and you'll make money. I'll watch it. Joe Martinez says needs a belt. You can change it. Well, some of that is true. Perhaps it needs a belt. And that's what I said to the guy. I mean, I've got enough common sense to figure that one out. I took it over to the place. I go, I think this needs a new belt. All right, we'll change the spark plug. How does that happen? And no, I can't change it. I have, um, I figured out that if I need to look up a YouTube video, I shouldn't be messing with it. People these days assume that because there's a YouTube video that they can fix anything. Like if there's a YouTube video of somebody building the Eiffel Tower, the next that doesn't mean you can watch it and you can build the Eiffel Tower. 
Uh, Chris says there's already a million videos uh, for your specific machine. You can. No, no. Trust me, I can't. The video does not make you experience. It doesn't make you uh, skill with tools. You're going to fuck something up. Unless it's the most basic of things, I will not attempt it. About as far as I would go is changing the oil on the truck. That's it. 20-year-old vehicle. I used to do that on old vehicles. Okay, no. Nick says it will be great content when the fire department has to untangle his arms from it. Yeah, I don't I don't have that uh I'm not th- that mechanically inclined. So, there was one time though. Okay. Out my back door, um the lock was fucked up and it's not like just a door handle. It's a pretty involved setup on this fucking handle and if you uh on the edge of the door there's a long metal plate and the door mechanism, the locking, the latch was fucked up. And I can't believe I attempted this fucking thing. But the next thing I know, I've unscrewed everything. And I've laid all these parts out. And we're talking, um, it's a lot of pulleys and springs and levers to make the latch do its thing with another latch on the bottom that it's all really fucking involved. And... um Well, so it wasn't working. I took it all apart and felt this great anxiety. But then somehow I didn't panic and remained calm and was able to successfully put it all back where it came from. And I guess something wasn't connecting where it should because once I put it all back together, shockingly, the fucking thing worked. And boy, did I feel good. Um, I mean, that, that satisfaction is is unparalleled. That's why we watch videos of people doing shit like this. It, it, it hits that pleasure center. Well, imagine my surprise when I was actually able to fix that back door. Joe Martinez brings up a bad memory. He says, sure you are. You fixed your check valve. Some of you may be familiar with that story. I did. I did fix it, but the result of the water shooting out of the sides and in my face uh, was why I don't do this in the first place. Chris says that's how you learn. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to that uh, that that uh, well more than I need to. Excuse me. Okay. I just received a uh, message. From Chris D. And he always sends something interesting. And uh, he did a screenshot of a Reddit thread. At r ask Reddit. And the uh, question line or the subject line. It says people who owned a hamster. How did it die? Now, that's fucking horrible because out of all these people that contributed stories, none are as involved as mine. My hamster is the or my hamster story is the granddaddy of them all, but they this couldn't be more right. People who owned a hamster, how did it die? Above it, it says hamsters never go out normally. And this is so true. I had the one get cooked in the car. I had the one that snuck out of the cage and was never found. And then the big kahuna. This person added to the comments. Not my hamster, but a friend was handling it and it bit his finger. He panicked and accidentally flung it into the fireplace. Oh, God. Now that actually sounds worse than what I did. 
I don't know. That was an accident. What I did was euthanasia. And I frankly don't want to look at any more of this um, because of the what I'm already going to have the recurring dream because fucking Chris sent it. Um, I need to minimize that chance and how terrifying the dream is going to be by not looking at it anymore. But I just want you to know that if you're ever pissed off at me, you can send something like that and you are going to mess with my fucking brain. Now, Chris is not pissed off at me. He's just sadistic because you have now interrupted my sleep, a future soon like tonight tomorrow maybe the next day maybe if i talk about it enough uh that uh, a morsel of information will leave my brain and it won't actually affect my sleep son of a bitch coal's not helping did it melt in a car or splatter off a tree yeah the word splatter is rough and referring to it as melting <clears throat> never ever fun to even think about all right. For those of you that are enjoying the show on Facebook, X, and YouTube, I'm going to send you on your way. If you want the rest of the show, you can get it on Twitch. Download the Twitch app today. And then search Eric Zane Live and follow me, and then you get the full show uninterrupted. I shouldn't say that. It, there are some interruptions because Amazon throws in commercials. If you want to skip those commercials, you got to subscribe. And you can do that one of two ways. Linking up your Amazon Prime account if you have it or uh, paying a few bucks. Some people do that. Thank you. I appreciate that. I don't really, I don't really uh, pitch that that often. I feel like uh, there's enough money flying out the door. Nevertheless. Uh, There you go. As always, there is a Patreon bonus podcast each and every day of the week, uh, which also I have a number of other interesting, fun shows, including the Ben and Eric Patreon podcast. And this week, Saturday on a Big Fraud Thursday, who are these free beers where we will be reviewing one of America's top morning radio programs, the infamous or famous free beer and hot wing show. Ben and I will be breaking down more of what goes on there. By the way, if you ever listen to that show, and I understand a lot of people, there is a lot of audience sharing. Uh, if you ever hear something that needs to be reviewed on who are these free beers, uh, please drop me a uh, note, send me an email, whatever. And uh, give me a timestamp or generally about the time that it happens whatever it is and uh we will go from there and we will check it out all of your tips are appreciated patreon.com slash eric zane try it for free for seven days and uh there you go thank you so much so you folks on facebook x and youtube have a good one and bye bye facebook and twitch brought to you by irvine's auto repair grand rapids hybrid and ev (coughs) excuse me X brought to you by Blue Frost IT and the open and live stream of this show today. Let me start by saying thank you, thank you, thank you for going to the Vouch store and checking out the products that I have for sale. Vouch merges podcasters with products. A local guy by the name of Kevin Brandis came up with the Vouch platform. And then he banged on the door of um, small businesses and said, hey, I want to sell your stuff on the Eric Zane Show podcast. And thus, the business is born. So podcasters teaming up with small businesses. In this case, I have three businesses that are on Vouch. When more come in, we will add them to my Vouch store. All you do is you go to vouch.com pardon me, vouch.store slash Eric Zane to check out what we have for you. I guess I've had a wormhole going. Sorry. Uh, the whole bean is available for twenty one ninety five. Thank you, Linda, for tipping me off. I wasn't even looking at the chat. Uh, then you got the uh, uh, toothbrush. Eight bucks for a toothbrush. Get them all at vouch.store slash Eric Zane.
I'm looking at the comments on the wormhole. Bro! He has no idea. Eric! I texted him. Is he aware at all? <laughs> Kyle says, oh no, fuck me, waiting for that response. Wow, this, this goes back. <laughs> oh no. Hey, old man, your blinker is on. Wow, that, that fucking goes back. That's intense. Holy shit. That's so funny. Sorry about that. I wonder how it sounded. I need to actually. I wonder how it sounded. I need to actually. Pizza. Pizza. I wonder how it sounded. I need to actually. Pizza. 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 See, now I'm aware of it. Pizza. 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 See, now I'm aware of it. Pizza. Pizza. All right. Tyler says it sounds like a church choir singing pizza. Linda says, does anyone have the original pizza clip? I do. I actually have a clip from Freebird Hot Wings um, where it's one hour of just wormholes. All right. Horrible. All of that. So embarrassing. Linda says you have some editing to do. Corey says, I just made a clip. Look in your clips. I don't want to do it now. I think we've covered it. I appreciate that, though. Chris says, this wormhole brought to you by Vouch. Linda wants to revisit the original pizza. Yeah, at some point we can do that. Well, anyway, go to the thing and buy the booze. The, the camp craft, I want you, everybody has to buy the camp craft and try it. And then you're going to love it. And if you don't love it, tell me. And then buy the toothbrush. Try the toothbrush. Everybody has to try it at least once. And then the uh, blow your legs off coffee. The veteran blow your legs off coffee. That's what we need to do. Everybody's got to try it. And then we can have a damn discussion about it. We can actually do a taste test of all the things and a toothbrush trying party. Okay. Are we on the same page? I appreciate you. And if you go and buy that shit like right away, like today, uh, that's going to make my pal Kevin who brought is the guy starting all this. Very, very happy. Everything that you buy, I get some of that cheddar. So basically, the veterans who got their legs blown off are going to get the lion's share of the money. Kevin, who owns Vouch, is going to get some money. And your old pal EZ is going to get some money. And these are all small startup companies. All right? Now, that doesn't mean that it's always going to be small startup companies because if Vouch takes off, it's going to be big as shit. You're going to be able to buy anything on there. This is the way podcasters, one of the many ways podcasters make money, like your old pal EZ. The wormhole alone was enough uh, to make you want to buy that shit. Buy it or I will bring the wormhole back. Buy it or I will bring the wormhole Hello, back. Hello, pizza! Buy it or I will... Sorry. Um... I don't even know how I got the wormhole in the first place, frankly. I'm trying to look at my, um, oh, I see how I did it. I see how I did it. Okay. Tyler says, okay, shut up and take my money. I will. I will do that. Um, let's see. Where am I now? Now my brain is all fried. Uh, thank you to King's Room Barbershop. Three locations, Northland Drive, Caledonia, and 821 36th Street Southwest next to um, the costume shop. Get your hair cut at King's Room Barbershop. Uh, exact locations and hours that your stylist is working and where they're working at kingsroom.net. 
Guys get their hair cut at King's Room Barbershop. Guys and ladies who like stylish short hair. Some of you do. I do sometimes. But mostly I'm a long hair sucker. King's Room Barbershop, online at kingsroom.net. Haircut's going to set you back 19 bucks. Thank you, Impact Power Sports. One of my latest sponsors on the show. I've kind of, um, I got a few of the old guards still. Now I have plenty of old guard, but we've been doing a little bit of turning over of the audience in the past year. Uh, King's Room Barbershop is new. Impact Power Sports is new. Uh, when it comes to fun toys in the outdoors, Impact Power Sports is where you need to shop. If not you, tell your friends. They're in Rockford, Michigan. ImpactPowerSportsMI.com. Michigan's newest dealer of Yamaha golf carts. And they can fix all of these amazing things that uh, keep us hillbillies up here entertained in Michigan. If you like plowing through mud, dirt, snow, debris, ice, at fast rates of speed, you get it at Impact Power Sports. Check out their website and look at the selection, impactpowersportsmi.com. Fun, fun, fun. Not so much fun is doing your taxes, which is why you shouldn't do it. Uh, make this local nerd, Troy Ginzer, the tax hobbit, do it for you. Tag Accounting. Online at tagcpa.net. Doesn't matter where you are in the U.S., the tax hobbit Troy Ginzer can do your taxes for you. Reach out 616 301 9516 to get started. Quite literally, that's it. You call, they pick up, you say, Easy sent me. I want Troy to do my taxes for the uh, tax year 2023. And then you just do what they tell you to do and you do nothing. Outside of gathering up your shit and sending it to them, you're done. There's nothing worse than looking at that fucking form when you were all like uh, full of P and V wanting to do your own taxes or use the stupid turbo tax. And you're like, oh yeah, I can do this. That's like me looking at a YouTube video, trying to fix my snowblower, knock that shit off. Uh, Nick in the arena, the electrician, he thought he knew what he was doing using turbo tax. And here we are one year later and that dick is still trying to figure it out. It's all fucked up. If he would have just called Troy and had this little nerd do it, he wouldn't have had any problem. So quit being an asshole and have Troy do your taxes for you. 616-301-9516. All right. Moving on. I'm looking forward to this story. I cannot believe what I'm seeing. There is a top high school athlete who is uh, so good in two sports. He's going to be a, um, a he's going to be playing at the next level. Now, not everybody is covering this story because. It's dangerous. But all you need to know is it's a white kid. He's really good. Tyler says, I thought this was fake. If it is what I think it is. Yeah, that's, I did too. <laughs> I did too. And then I, I dug into it a little deeper. When I saw it, I, when I saw this story, I was like, don't be fake. Don't be fake. It's not fake. Kid is a star basketball player, star football player. He's probably going to play football at like uh, West Virginia, you know, division one school, good college. As far as I can tell, um, his name, his first name is Noah. Now, if you're listening to the audio podcast right now, I'm going to click on the on the story, the page, so people can see his name. So that audience is going to see this and figure it out before I'm going to actually try to figure out how to say it.
His first name is Noah, N-O-A-H, Noah. His last name, I'm just going to spell it, K-N, as in Nancy, I-G-G-A. So if you just lose the K, it's, it's what black people call each other. So, I'm not an idiot. There is no fucking way I'm going to pronounce that the way it's written. I'm assuming, okay, when you see that with the K and the N, you, one would assume that that K is silent. All right. Now, the mom and dad must be fucking pranksters. Because Noah, I mean, it becomes like a phrase. This guy's name becomes, hey, you, Noah. My God. Kyle said, and how many respond, quote, I know a few. I'm glad they didn't name the kid uh, first name, fuck off and die. First thing I, uh, one of the many things going through my brain was like, well, there's, it's gotta be, uh, can, can sound at the start of K N I G G A. <laughs> okay. So this should be a story that should be everywhere, but because it's so dangerous, it's not getting the pub that it should. So I'm doing my part as a public service to spread the hilarity of this story. Uh, Kyle says this would be a good PA prank name. No, absolutely. Except you'd have to say it into the phone like how we all think it should be pronounced. K-N-I-G-G-A. If you're, uh, if they do actually, and they don't, they, they obviously do not pronounce it the way we all want it to be pronounced. But if it did, my God, you would have to change your name. I mean, you would probably, if your name was pronounced that way, you'd, you'd rather have the last name of like cocksucker than you would this. Blue chaos says a hard eye. Meaning like a long eye, not a hard eye. That would be a long eye. Like if the last part of that, if it was uh, pronounced, I'm going to say this, Kaniga. Kaniga, but it looks like something entirely different. Just seeing it alone is hysterical. There's been a lot of fun memes Uh, showing like sports broadcasters sweating and it says sports broadcasters for the next four years. Tyler says my dream is that he plays football for Michigan and catches a pass from Alex Orgy from Michigan. And then it would be quote, it's a N word orgy in the end zone. Come on. Nick says Chappelle show had a bit about this family. That's true. I remember that. A man, a man says, Oh my God, the mod flagged me. Yeah, that's a bot. I I don't know. I mean, it's not me. I didn't, I don't have a mod unless it was just auto. You must've done. Of course you get flagged. You're the biggest piece of shit in this whole group. All right, Robert Griffin III, the former quarterback, now broadcaster, black. He interviewed the family. And he got to the bottom of it. The video is a little bit annoying. 
But uh, let's get into it. This is uh, Robert Griffin III, RG3, and the family. <clears throat> Sorry, have you guys ever been to Paris? It's a random question, but it's not a, it's not a random question. I don't know enough to get that reference. Oh, shit. God damn it. I hate this. If you pause one of those... Never been to Paris. It's a random question, but it's not a it's not a random hey, it's a random question. I know I know why. There's a song uh, that says in Paris. I know the song. I'm just I'm just asking them the question. Okay, now, okay, now I get it. Feed him the answer. We've never been to Paris. How do you pronounce your last name? I think he means how do you pronounce your last name, but okay. Oh, uh, so this is how you pronounce it. It's Noah Kanega. You say uh, Kanega. Kanega. Like Kanega. <laughs> what do you mean by that? See, that's the key. It's Kanega. <laughs> there you that, go. There you go. Now we vibing. Now we vibing a little bit. I, I kind of hate Robert Griffin the Third. So I know for was he eating in the middle of that? By the some way, some people that might ruin the name. I don't think it ruins the name at all. I think you should get a couple t-shirts that say Kanega, please daddy chill i think it would be hilarious anyone ever gotten mad about okay these white people are like yeah good thing you're saying it all because black people can't do this to white people you can't you can't talk them into this type of silliness over such an explosive name all right you got to take that you got to hold that with uh and like revere it you, th this guy needs to be your leader. About your last name. Uh, I don't think they've gotten mad. <laughs> I don't know why he edited. This RG3 did all these stupid edits. I had a few guys come to me like, hey, man, what's up with this? <laughs> uh, I was say it. Um, but I don't think anybody's ever gotten mad. <clears throat> Sorry, have you guys ever been to Paris? So <sighs> So what started out as a fantastic story got ruined by by RG3. <laughs> Tyler says, Kanega talking to the whitest black guy ever. Kyle says they are Kanega rich and forgot to pay their bills. Anyway, Kanega. So if you're doing the broadcasting, you know who should really be careful is our old pal Freebeer. Um, his brain works in a really weird way. It's, it's Ron Burgundy syndrome. He doesn't uh, read that well, and he um, has issues with spelling. And if it's in front of him, he will say it. Uh, that's the trifecta of disaster. Okay. Um, so he would be like the guy that the baseball announcer who said N-word league museum and not even know it. So he's looking at a guy with a K-N-I-G-G-A last name. Uh, Greg would, in fact, say that. And then he would get canceled. He would actually say the name. I, I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, if you actually did say, uh, you know, what, read it as it's written. Uh, I don't know if you'd get in trouble for that. But if I'm doing the game, if I'm doing the game, I have written in gigantic block letters in front of me during the audio broadcast or the TV broadcast, uh, K U H K dash capital N A Y and Kane and then dash either G A or G U H Kanega Kanega. And you practice it and then you sweat it out. You do the goddamn game or Let's say the kid's number is 53 and he catches a pass. You just don't say it. That might even be more entertaining. You just commit to not saying it. So if Kanega catches a pass, you go 53 with the grab. 
50, you do not refer to him as his name. Broadcasters and the N-word um, are, it's, it's one of the most fantastic things in the world. Ultimately, everyone laughs, but one person gets punished, and that is the broadcaster that says it. Blue Chaos says, name me another English word that the K is silent before an N. Nave. I think that's what you're looking for. I'm pretty sure. K-N-A-V-E. Nave. Knife. Um, so, ka ne ga I, I see what you're getting at, though. Knight. Um, knowledge. But um, since we don't say knife, knight, knowledge, it's clear to me that at some point in the past, this name Kanega was pronounced differently. The family has added the ka to it because at some point in time, um, it wasn't there and there would just be uh, the N-word the way black people say it. Okay, and back in the U.S. a time ago, a long time ago, it was probably acceptable to say that. It was probably the first words that I ever uttered. You know, uh, and it wasn't mama, dada. It was it was the N word because that's the way we lived back then. You you teach kids that it's okay to call black people that horrible name, and we don't do that now. We've moved past that. So we we t- we put a ka sound at the at the end of, at the beginning of it. But I like I like the way you're thinking, Blue Chaos. Obviously, um, they added that ka sound just to make this an acceptable term, and they took the uh, uh, I and made it a a sound to give us kanega. Amanda says that her dad still says it in private. Yeah, I have people in my life that say that word too. It always makes you go. I have people in my life that say the N word. And then I have people that um, uh, say horrible things about the gays. And, um, you know, I, I th- this one beloved person in my family, family says something horrible. And I'm like, you know. My daughter, he's just say that. You're really going to hurt her. You got to, you're going to have to figure some shit out here. And, you know, it hurts me too because, uh, you know, that's my daughter. So do you think maybe you can reel it in to some degree? Is it asking you too much to uh, maybe, uh, 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 you know, stop that? Is that possible? Uh, Donko re- references something that he must be older like I am because I remember growing up, we would have a, uh, a fucking thing of nuts with a nutcracker and you'd have uh, almonds and pecans in there. And, and then these big black nuts that are Brazil nuts and they're awesome. But my dad, and mom would say, hey, get me one of those Kanega toes. I'm like, what? Yeah, uh, give me a Kanega toe. And I'm like, okay, is this what it's called? Yeah, that's, that's, what, that's what it is. So then I'm walking around the house, four years old, five years old, saying, oh, man, I love these Kanega toes. And everybody's like, yeah, that's what you call them. That's what that, that's what they are. It's, it's, you go into the store, it's this Kanega toes right on it. Fucking hey. So ridiculous. Still funny. I know it's a funny racist joke. Waiting on her shopping list as N word toes. God damn it. So awful. Well, anyway, 
the Kanega family. There's only one person talking to them, and that is um, Robert Griffin III. Leave it to TMZ to do the story about it. I'm glad they did. Um, high school spo- sports star Noah Kanega has be. I'm actually practicing. With a little luck, this guy will go on to become like a Hall of Fame football player. And it'll be a bust of him with K-N-I-G-G-A. Noah K-N-I-G-G-A underneath him. Uh, He wants everyone to know his name is safe for everyone to say as long as it's pronounced correctly. I think, though, that this does change the game for announcers because if they do accidentally slip up and say it, you can't possibly... Hold that against them, right? Uh, Chris says, my mom used to still say that until my brother adopted my Ethiopian niece. Oh, yeah, that's excellent. You know? That they uh, that they stopped. Yeah, you definitely don't want to say that. RG3 had fun with it, as we uh, talked about, asking the Kanegas. You see, saying Kanega feels weird to me because of how absurdly it's written, how it looks, okay? That K might as well not be there. Uh, They were all very, very friendly. Here's a pic of the kid. uh, Like, he's like the best basketball player. He got trophy for best basketball player. Here he is visiting West Virginia on a football weekend. The dude's going to get a football and basketball scholarship. He's that good. He is one excellent Kanega. His family are a bunch of Kanega lovers. They love each other very much. All right. I'm putting this behind me. I can go no further with these jokes. Mitch Kiesler writes, off topic. Here's my wager, Eric. Lions win. I get a free shot at you at the next paintball event. If the Lions lose, you get a free shot at me next Sunday. I won't shoot back. Absolutely not. No. Again, me saying that they're going to lose is more of a defense mechanism. Hope for the best. Wait a minute. Yeah. Expect the worst. Hope for the best. But um, no, I it, it's all. Hey, man, trust me, I already have enough anxiety watching them or knowing that a game is even going on. I don't need that element to really put me over the edge. So no, I, I'm I, thank you, but no, no thank you. Uh, back to the Canegas. I wonder if a restaurant host has ever said party of two and then fucked up the name so that it rhymes with biggas. Party of two biggas. I don't even like saying that. Joe Martinez says, just like he said, Michigan would lose, would lose. And then he gives me the finger. So do you think the lions are going to win Joe Martinez? Because I don't think the Lions are going to win. And, you know, honestly, the Michigan thing is old news. You won. Nobody cares anymore. You get your day, you had it, and now it's over. Everybody's moved on. Nobody gives a shit anymore. The only people who care are fucking psychopaths like you who think that, you know, we have to celebrate this every day of the year. So Lions lose. I agree with you, you dumb fuck. I agree that the Lions will lose. I'm telling you they're going to lose. We are on the same page. So I don't know why you're fucking coming in here and uh, and picking a fight with your old pal EZ. What's hilarious about Joe when he rapid fires off five straight comments is that usually four of them are like, fucking all fucked up 
One of the things he likes to say is we bow to no one. And then he writes, we now to no one. And the fact that the no is an N-O and not a K-N-O-W is a small victory. I had to embarrass that one out of him. I go, Joe, it's not, when you say no one, it's not K-N-O-W, twat. It's N-O-O-N-E. My God. He says, it's hard while driving. No, it's hard while Mexican. That's what it is. Mitch Keechler says, uh, Joe, wish you worked in my area. I'm going to need a new furnace and AC. Currently, whole house is baseboard heat. Well, you don't live that far away. Joe would come and do that. You dumbass. You don't live in like Alaska. Howell, Michigan. Oh yeah, he'll do that. He might charge you for gas, but he's definitely going to do that. That's a one day job. Uh, (laughs) Dumb fuck Martinez says it's hard while driving. You shouldn't be driving and texting. Stop doing that. You're going to smash up your truck. It's a wintry, snowy day. You're going to smash up your vehicle just like Chris, the Mexican. Dumbass. All right. So Joe is going to Howell to install that with the uh, with the tarantula farmer. Call him at 616-516-8579. Joe says no if he has a baseboard heat. Why not? What the fuck is wrong with you? Needs duck work. You will do it. Quit being lazy. Quit being a lazy Kanega. (laughs) Oh, no. All right. Joe says, no, it's not a one day job. Who cares? Just do it. Shut up. Um, Speaking of Michigan, I have more proof that Harbaugh is um, an autistic genius. Some of you may have caught this. I meant to talk about it yesterday following the national championship, but I forgot. We pick it up. The game is won. The confetti is pouring down. The reporter wants to talk to him. Notice he's staring off into the distance. He is mesmerized by the confetti. This is the tism. Well, Coach, you escaped the the Gatorade all this time. He's not even paying attention to her. He's just staring at the confetti. Well, Coach, you escaped the the Gatorade all this time. And again, I love autism. People who have autism have special gifts. It's not as refined as it will be in 500 years when our species evolves. But it's brilliance. So this is his brilliance. Right now, when he's seen the confetti, he's coming up with, like, offensive plays. Well, Coach, you escaped the, the Gatorade all this time. Yeah. How sweet does this little bath feel right now? It's pretty great. You know, you watch this confetti come down. It's like thousands of confetti. It tells a story. There's a story in every one of those pieces of confetti to me. There is a story in every one of those pieces of confetti. Thank you for the reminder, Kenny. We'll come back to Harbaugh in a minute. Uh, we got to get dad on. Linda says simple minds are easily entertained. Kent says, I don't think it's autism. He's enjoying the moment. Kent, it's the comment. Every one of these pieces of confetti has a story to tell. 
The guy's fucked up. There's no question. Rich says the Michigan thing is done and over with. Two seconds later, starts talking about Michigan. Yeah, but I'm not talking glowingly. I'm not like going, yeah, go team. Uh, He's enjoying the moment. If it was train-shaped confetti, I would think it was autism. I don't get it. I don't get your joke. That's why I didn't read the other half of it. I didn't get it. Let's bring in Dad for near meathead. Here we go. You sound like you're in a well. Hello. Hello, Dad. How are you? Okay. How about you? Good morning. Good morning. I just got an item. Up... You just caught me on time. <laughs> you been up. I mean, I've been up, but uh, not awake. Oh yeah, hey, you know, I mean, that's that's okay. I'm, I, I know you like to stay up late and party. Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. Um, How's it going? It's going well. It's going well. Did you get a lot of snow over there? No, no, no we didn't. We got nothing. All right, we got a little bit, and we're expecting more coming up. So I know you would be in heaven here. Well, nothing right now. It's pretty dry. It's supposed to come. It's uh, it's on the way. So we um we don't we don't clear the snow anymore, do we? There's like somebody who does that for you. Is that is that how that works? No. Oh, okay. I didn't know if I didn't no. know if if you did it or if if your neighbor did it or something like that. The neighbor does it, but he, your father has to get out there and do part of it. I do some thing. cleaning. Up, oh, you know. boy, be careful, please. Be careful. I don't want to do it hey, at all. I put a shovel in front of my body, but my hands in there, and I walk behind it. I don't pick it up. I don't do nothing. He, she thinks I'm lying. Well, I remember you like fell last year, so I don't know. If that's a great idea. It's not. Oh yeah. Well, you see, she's not happy with you. You got to kind of like uh, keep her happy. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I know that. Hey, I buy that twelve pack. Hey, I, <laughs> I know you love to keep her happy, Dad. Of course I do. All right. Um, here we go, Dad. I've got uh, some questions for you. I don't have a lot, so this might be short, but that's okay. Uh, I've got I've got hey. a question from Nathan. Nathan. Yeah. How you doing, buddy? He uh, he loves you, and he says, um, "Have you ever had a bad feeling about something, like you knew something was about to happen that's wrong, like like something was about to happen wrong, almost like a feeling of dread?" I think Nathan. I know what you're saying. Yeah, I think Nathan has a feeling of dread. What do you think about that, Dad? Well, I I, I don't know if I can give a, a resolution to. What mm-hmm. that is. Right, right. But have you ever had that happen where you're like, boy, I just, you almost have like a uh, a sixth sense telling you that th- something's not right? Yeah, something is not right. And, then, uh, and I don't know how I resolve that, uh, except uh, it's something that's coming. Uh, take it as it comes. Yeah, you know, you know, I mean, I, I, I sometimes wait and try to um, try to work past it, and typically it's yeah. just something. It's something in my silly brain that's happening. I, I have to do, uh, a, I have to do a better job of telling myself not to worry. You know. Yeah. Well, no, it's not a not to worry. Uh, it's uh, what is going to happen. That that's a stick in there. Uh, I, I don't know how to describe this thing to you. Yeah, it's almost like a like a uh, premonition. Well, worrying is uh, worrying is the key, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. Worrying is the key. Yeah, that you're gonna do something. That uh, something's happening. Oh, okay. But you're not saying it's a good idea to start worrying, are you? No, no, no. I don't think so. Okay. Because it's not. Re- it's, I do know for for a fact that it's not going to resolve it. You know, God doesn't like you to worry. I know you guys are very religious. Well, definitely 
worrying is not the answer to anything. Wait a minute. You just said worrying is the key. Is the key, but it's not the answer. Oh, okay. All right. All right. You can worry it, but it's not going to resolve it. But you keep worrying if you want. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, <laughs> the Lions place uh, Sunday night, Dad. Hey, I heard it says I didn't watch the game. Well, you did too. Well, partially I did. Well, you. Yeah. Oh. The, the the last game you saw that and they won, but now they now they're in the playoffs, Dad. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's win and advance, lose, and you go home for the year. Yeah. I didn't know that they were going to have to play again. I thought it was done. No. No, no. They, uh, you know that thing called the Super Bowl, Dad? Yeah. Well, if you win the playoffs games, then you can go to the Super Bowl. You go to playoff. Is that it? Well, uh, yeah. you have to win uh, three or four games. Um well, you have to win a bunch of playoff games. If you win those, then you can go to the Super Bowl. So that starts this weekend. Oh. So they're going to play the Rams on Sunday. Uh, so the first, the first game is Sunday. Yeah. Now it now it really starts. Now it's you know they they did all that uh, regular season to determine if they get into the playoffs. Well, they're in, and that doesn't happen that often. And they play, know, yeah. You know, and so they've been quite good. Dad, they uh, they they won twelve games this year, and they lost five only. That's been hey, that's awesome. Yeah, it's really good. It's one of the one of the better records in the whole league. So, sure, so sure. Uh, they they play against uh, the Los Angeles Rams. That game is in Detroit. So, can we get a prediction? Lions and the Rams. Who's going to win? Lions. I think the Lions are going to win. Okay, that is excellent. It, it, this is really determination. It's it's it's, a, it's really into into the body right now to win this game. Yeah, you got to win. You know, like win at all costs. You know, this is this yes. is uh this is when it it really gets intense. So uh, there's going to be a, like seventy thousand people there watching that game. Do you have a score between the Lions and the Rams? What do you think will be the score that the Lions win by? Well, honestly, I have not thought about that. Oh, yeah? I would, I would say that Detroit's going to win by 14. All right. So I'm going to write that down. Lions by 14. Yeah. And then we will revisit that. At the appropriate time. Hopefully you're right. Now, I, I hope so. for some reason, I'm not optimistic. I don't feel good about this. Well, you, you, that's, that's just not a good uh, well, analogy. Yeah. As you know, worrying is the key, and I am worrying. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> no, just be you know, positive that we're going to win. That's a great uh, that's a great idea, Dad. It's um, you gotta stay positive. All right, Dad. Uh, Patrick in South Carolina writes in, and uh, Patrick writes, "Dear Meathead and Joanne, my son wants a pet. Uh, he doesn't indicate what type of pet. Let's just assume it's a dog or a cat. He writes, but I'm worried that it might tear up the house." And I will end up being the primary pet caregiver. Uh, What is your What is your advice? Number one thing is, first of all, I'm not in favor of having pets. No, you're not. No, 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 not necessarily. No, Uh, I don't like a a dog hanging around me. I I, I don't know how to describe. I think I think you like dogs visiting, but you don't like dogs living with you. No, I, yes, I don't. I don't like the fact that I gotta be catered to them, and or I don't mind taking them for a walk. Oh, okay. So oh, you would, you wouldn't I don't mind, mind that. You wouldn't mind I being. The, uh-huh. I love the animal. So you're telling me that if you walked into the living room and there was a big pile of poo, you would be like, "Oh my god!" I'd, I'm, you'd be furious. You're yeah, like, you gotta I wouldn't get rid- like that at all. Oh no. Yeah, that's a that's a regular thing at my house. You would not last one day here. 
Well, you got five dogs, don't you? Four. Four? Four dogs, two cats, and a brother-in-law. <laughs> Which one's foolish? Yeah. Which one? The brother-in-law. Which one? The brother-in-law craps in the living room. <laughs> oh boy! What's his name? <laughs> his name is Kevin. Oh yeah, I, I remember that. Name. His name is Kevin, but I call him the NFK. <laughs> hey, that's, that's a nice thing that yeah. uh, he lives. Yeah, he's, he's great. I, I call I call him the NFK because that stands for No Filter Kevin because he doesn't have a, a filter. <laughs> uh, well, but, that's, yeah, that's really a good thing. Yeah, no, no, it's horrible, but it, it, it it's okay. Oh, we can we we can deal. We can deal. I've had worse things happen to me in my life. Uh, I know you. We, I and, know you have. And we and we like his company. You know, I mean, it's uh, it's it's all it's all good. Um. So yeah. So anyway, you you don't think that Pat should get the um, uh, pet for his uh, for his son, right? Yeah, because there's a, just think of the problem that you have. Oh, clean. Always had a dog. Yeah, but still to yeah. clean off after him um, and all that. That's because you're old. You loved him when you were. Well, um, when I was according to her when I was young, right. I loved him. Well, right now, I I don't like him. Well, I I tell you what, I um I, I I will share my own opinion after we hang up on you. But uh that is uh that is there you go, Patrick. That is what uh my dad has to say about you having a pet. Now, Dad, um, you know, when I was a kid growing up, I had a hamster. Do you remember the hamster, yes. Dad? Yes, yes. I remember you took us to the to the movie and uh and you and you like cooked the hamster in the car. I don't remember that. Oh, yeah, it was a bad one. It was like a 100-degree day, and you said, ah, lock them up and roll up the windows. <laughs> all right. Uh, okay. Well, Dad, uh, you know, that's uh, that's all the questions that, that we have for you today. Let me double-check, make sure there's I'm not missing anything. Occasionally, I do uh, miss one or two. Uh, do you have any questions for us, Dad? Uh, first of all, there's... Uh, is the weather as crappy as it is uh, over where we live? Um, you know, I don't know if uh, it's the same. I think I think we have a different scenario because we got about half a foot of snow and it's wet and sloppy and gross. Oh, we got brand new. Oh, this is totally dry. It's coming this way. Uh, okay. This is probably going to hit us. Right, but uh, not, not yet, you know. Okay, yeah. So you're you're safe. We it's a little different here, you know. On the west side, we have that lake that's right by us and changes everything. So, yeah. um, okay. Well, as always, you have a uh, wonderful day. <laughs> please, please be safe. Okay, I would uh, that would make me happy. And yeah. uh, oh, one more thing. Did you see that Michigan won the national championship? Yes. Yeah, they they're like the the number one that's, team. That's- they 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 slaughtered Washington. They uh they they brought the national championship home. Are you familiar with that coach Jim Harbaugh? Harbaugh is good. Yeah, he's uh he's a winner. There's no question. There's yeah, no question. He's definitely good. Uh okay. Yeah. Well, that's it. I love you guys and just remember worrying is the key and uh <laughs> the the Lions will win by 14 points and you're yes. not and you are not fond of having pets. No. Okay. Because because I don't want to be catering to right. animals. Yeah, you want to you want to come and go as you please, and that's totally totally fine. Yeah. Okay. Well, I love you, Dad. All right. I love you, Joanne. Have a great day, and your audience. We're wonderful people. God bless you all, and I'll talk to you at the next session. Okay. Thanks again, guys. Love Goodbye. You, love you too. Bye bye. There you go, dear meathead. Worrying is the key. Lions by 14. Loves Harbaugh. Not a fan of, not in favor of having pets. Um, Patrick, dear meathead and Joanne, my son wants a pet, but I'm worried it might tear up the house and I will end up being the primary pet caregiver. Um, First of all, it will tear up the house. 
and you will be the primary pet caregiver. That is true. Because I think you have a young son. Um, in my opinion, yeah, that's all going to happen. But I don't care. I love pets. I mean, I don't give a shit. My house smells like a goddamn cat box all the time. Stevie says, damn, work made me miss most of the segment. I'll have to listen back. Uh, Dad says that, or uh, Joe Martinez says, my dad is a Michigan man. Meathead, go blue. My man loves Harbaugh. Tarantula Farmer says, is Eric crazy for thinking the Lions will lose? Well, dude, I don't know. I mean, first of all, you can't forget that they're the Lions. Um, Second of all, the Rams started the year at three and six and finished it at seven and one. Stafford had um, an incredible year, arguably the best year of any quarterback in the league this year. And um, so, and you know, you can't, uh, uh, the receiver's name is Puka Nakua. I think that's his name. And then Cooper Cup. So Puka and Cooper, Cooper Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua. Say that five times fast. Uh, the JFK family is in here. I don't think is in here anymore, but made a comment that says, you can tell Zane rips Mary Jane. Buddy's eyes are torched. Then it says, Lions are a free check, $20,000 max. I don't know what that means. So he thinks I get stoned? You know, of all the impressions that you've ever thought about me, that's one that I've never heard of before. Like, I seem like I'm under the influence of something. All right. If you say so. The last time... I ripped Mary Jane. Uh, I was in college. I'm guessing 1990. Uh, 90? Yeah, 1990. Me and my uh, college roommate, John Hurt. And uh, then we went ahead and we took fish sticks and put them in the toaster oven in the dorm. And then we forgot about them. And, uh, I mean, you can just imagine if they cook properly, it would smell bad enough. Fish sticks in the dorm. Well, they were damn near burnt or burnt. So imagine that smell. And our roommate was the RA. His name was uh, Dave Planson. Dave or Dan? I don't know what the fuck. Planson was the RA. And so we're fucking stoned to the bone. Laughing our asses off because the whole God, all of Merrill Hall, second floor, smells like burnt fucking fish sticks. I'll never forget, my roommate, John Hurt, is two, two roommates, the RA and John. And John could not stand the other roommate. Hurty is a longtime friend. He's still friends to this day. And uh, I'll never forget, he hated the other guy so much so that he, John brushed his teeth. And then instead of spitting into the sink, he took our roommate's toothpaste and spit, somehow forced what's in his mouth into the tube. (laughs) He went on to become a dentist. I've mentioned this before, Dr. Hurt. And I remember telling him at the time in 1990, I go, if you're going to be a dentist, you need to change your name. No, that's not true. Why? And he says, my dad is Dr. Hurt. And he practiced here in West Michigan. I think he's, I'm sure he's retired now. And he, he was fine. I go, I'm telling you, I don't give a fuck what he did. You will not have that same success if your name is Dr. Hurt the dentist you're going to have to change your name 
I doubt he remembers the conversation. But lo and behold, he legally changed his name to Dr. Hurst. He threw the S in. Can you imagine if it was Kanega? That would be great. I would actually go out of my way to visit a dentist named Dr. Kanega or Dr. Hurt. You know, you got to throw Dr. Hurt a bone. Um, he says, yeah, I, I talked to him about it. I go, do you remember that conversation? No. I go, well, I told you this. He goes, changing uh, a name is nearly impossible. It's very difficult to do. I changed my name. And um, because it, I, I, got, I, I finished my degree, I put up my sign in front, uh, Dr. Hurt taking appointments, and no one called. He had to start over. One letter is all it took to turn it around for him. Unbelievable. All right. Thank you to dad on Dear Meathead. Uh, thank you for writing in with questions. We were a little lean, but I was able to stretch him. We figured it out. Uh, let's see. What, Linda says, my ex-husband's dentist name was Richard... Richard Held. In other words, Dick Held. That's great. Uh, changing a name is almost impossible. Kenny says, no, no, I'm not kidding you. You have to jump through hoops through like the court to make that happen. You can't just say it. Like he had to go ahead and legally change his name. When you legally change your name, it's a huge pain in the ass. They make it so much red tape. I know this because he explained to me the process. Joe Martinez writes, Eric, remember the time you had the cat that took a crap in the little litter box while we were working down in the basement? Yeah, Fuckface was installing all sorts of shit when he worked for Penning. And uh, he had to... Oh my God. It was so bad. It like cleared out the basement. Stevie says, Dr. Hurt was my husband's dentist. He retired a few years ago. Exact. See, uh, Kenny writes, my oldest daughter's cat is currently locked in our main bathroom. Meowing like crazy. I'm not supposed to have pets here in my apartment. How dumb are you? Why would you do that? Why would you agree to that? You can't have pets there. And then you break the rule. You're going to get fucking caught. And then your ass is going to be out. And then we're going to get the 50-page uh, Facebook post of, Woe is me. I got thrown out. And I need love. Someone help me. <laughs> Don't do that. And the fucking cat. I feel so bad for the cat. What the fuck, man? Ben Glaze says, brand new lions this year. Ben, um, I am not yet to that point. I am not going to be in that. No. Someone else can do that. The lions are going to lose. You better, you better wrap your brain around that now. Kenny says he okayed it with the office manager yesterday evening. Well, so it is okay. It wasn't okay. Well, then why did you write that? Why did you write, I can't have cats, but I got an okay. Linda says, is Ben and Eric tonight or, or tomorrow? I don't know if you heard. You probably got in here late. Ben and Eric has a special rare... Big Fraud Saturday happening. I think this may have happened once in the past. The Ben and Eric bid Big Fraud Saturday takes place. Uh, time not yet confirmed. We will have that sometime today. I just basically have to pick a time. And then we're going to do who are these free beers? And then after that, we're going to bust out the Ben and Eric Patreon podcast. It's going to be awesome. I cannot wait. I cannot wait to play for Ben. My exes and bros last Friday remix. That's the show that Ben works on. 
Monday through Friday. And Anthony Bellino starts the show by saying, oh, you're right, Elky, right, underscore Elky, uh, Ben at Glaze. You can follow him on Twitter. Gentlemen, how are you? I'm good. Ben only answers because the other ding-dong doesn't have a microphone. And then he, like, doesn't really ask Ben anything, but yet he's he invites him almost into the conversation and then doesn't let him talk, and then he's off and running for three hours of uh, of sports talk. It's the damnedest thing. This started out as we used to blame Ben and say it was his fucking fault on this, but it's not. It's not. I don't know why he even goes to Ben. If you're going to go to Ben, I mean, have a conversation with him. Don't just say hi. My God, Ben actually has some pretty good shit to say. He is a pretty funny Kanega. Um, you know, Kanega is now going to replace, uh, N word. You do realize that no longer are people going to say the N word. I mean, they're not going to say, Hey, uh, so-and-so called me a bad name. What do you call you? The N word. It's going to be like, so-and-so called me a bad name. What do you call you? Kanega. So that is going to be the new form of it. And uh, I I am here for every bit of that. All right. Uh, Kenny writes, he's not as funny as Joe Joy, though. Okay, now I want you to know that I don't I don't know what that means. Yeah, I don't know what Joe Joy is. Maybe if you your fingers each finger. Uh, wasn't six inches wide, you could type like a normal person. I think you need to lose weight just so that your hand isn't four feet wide from fat so that you can actually type things. Donko says, I thought ninja was the word. Ninja was the word, but now it's Kanega. Going forward, it's Kanega. Everybody, hold right there. Your old pal EZ has to go tinkle. It is a snow day. Breaking news. I will be back. Uh, Concerning typing things, mistyping, Kenny writes, my keyboard app changed it. And then he wrote, go fuck yourself. Um, What about uh, those things called eyes? Most people look at it and then post it. What about that? Ding dong. Corey says the boomer bunker would say all these Kanegas are ruining this country. Then he adds Twitch is firing 500 employees tomorrow. I, really? I didn't even know about that. Oh my God. Uh, Donut Dan adds, hey, everyone, how about them Pistons? Three wins, 34 losses. I wonder if the team that the Globetrotters beat up could beat them also. Yeah, you know, I mean, um, the, I, I am hoping that they have another 30-game uh, losing streak or 29-game losing streak, however long it was. I think it was 28. Um. Incredible. They they may set set a, uh, an NBA record for losses in a year. They're they're on pace right now to uh, uh, do even worse than that. Chris says Twitch has 500 employees. Oh, you would be surprised. There's a ton of people that work for Twitch. Oh yeah, this stuff. Uh, this shit doesn't happen like by magic. Come on. Okay, where was I? I was talking about Harbaugh having the tism. My God, he's brilliant. Um, this is uh, this is that clip again. What? Listen to how weird this is. He's so distracted by confetti. Well, coach, you escaped. So this, he doesn't have a filter. So, if it's in his brain, it's going to come out his mouth. The, the Gatorade all this time. Yeah. How sweet. 
Did you see her get his attention? He was just staring off into it, and then he's like, oh, well, he got, like, smacked back to reality. All this time. Right there. How sweet does this... I don't know why that's pausing. Right now. It's pretty great. You know, you watch this confetti come down, it's like thousands of confetti. It tells a story. There's a story in every one of those pieces of confetti. What a stupid metaphor. There's a story in every one of those pieces of confetti. Ugh. Amazing blue confetti. Just so proud of our team. Th th that's where he should have started. I'm just so proud of our team. The story that your team tells tonight, Coach. It's hard to be... Okay, now she's trying to lean into it with, oh, yeah. Okay, all the confetti's got a story. But what's your story about how the team won? This is so stupid. Perfect. 15-0. Took on all comers. And, uh... The last one standing. Champions. You're the son of a coach. Okay, so all this is going on. No, nothing's actually been said. He said platitudes. 15 and 0, last one standing. Confetti tells the story. She says, you tell me your story. And that's it. Champions. You're the son of a coach. You've been in these moments before. But how's this one different? Because it's yours and your team's. Wait a minute. He's been in this before? What is that supposed to be? Moments before, but how's this one different because it's yours and your team's? Well, you said it right there. It is. You just answered it for him, ding dong. Uh, I mean, There's the dad. He's, he's, his wife's right in front of him. And he's like, where is she? What's her, what the hell's going on? He looks so much like Harbaugh. Teams. Uh, I mean, it's, it's just such a glorious feeling. I mean, I really don't have any more words than that, you know? Maybe, maybe to quote J.J. McCarthy, bet. So he says nothing. Okay. Look at this cop, this Michigan state trooper. He's looking at him like he's a psychopath. So he goes through all that and doesn't say shit. He doesn't even have the tism is so strong. He doesn't even have the ability to string together a couple of sentences in the moment. All he does is looks at the confetti, gets nervous, and goes, ah, all the confetti has a story, and a uh, bad 15 and all. Uh, uh. It's horrible. Uh, Joey says, enjoying the moment. Oh, I get that, but talk. Jesus. He lost the Super Bowl, so maybe that's the basis behind the confetti question. I don't fucking know. God, he's annoying. Ugh. If you throw toothpicks on the ground, he could probably tell you how many are there. He could probably accurately, just by looking at it, say how many pieces of confetti fell from the rafters of the stadium. My God. Well, anyway, uh, now we wait. What's next for Harbaugh? What do you all think? Is this guy going to be coaching Michigan next year? Is he going to be coaching in the NFL? And if he is going to be coaching in the NFL, where do you think he'll coach? My bet is the LA Chargers. That's what I think is going to happen. But it could be Chicago. I mean, the Bears fired their coach. He used to play football for Chicago. This guy has a lot in the tank. He's age 60. So, you know, Belichick is into his 70s. And then the storyline, where the fuck is Belichick going to go? Did you see that for the Tennessee Titans, they got that guy, Mike Vrabel. He got fired, but his his stock is still pretty high. He'll land on his feet somewhere. Uh, that's that's uh, crazy. You know, you can be doing so well one year, and um, it just changes so dramatically for for coaches. Talk about um, a a short shelf life. You know, you can be Bill Belichick and win as many Super Bowls as he did, and then you know you end up. Have struggling for a few years and then that's it you're out uh kenny says nfl comment i bet the stupid titans owner 
wants him. Uh, I don't know. Uh, well, that would be either Harbaugh or Belichick. I'm not sure what you mean. And then Kenny refers to the owner of the Titans as a dumb bitch. She keeps saying she has some vision for the team, but refuses to elaborate. Uh, Linda says, hopefully Derrick Henry gets out of there so Scumbaugh can't poison him. You know, it remains to be, I'll say this about Harbaugh. Everybody loves Harbaugh. The players love Harbaugh. There's no one who doesn't love Harbaugh. The players love him. The fans love him. And he's a goddamn winner. He was a winner in San Francisco. I don't know how the hell he wore out his welcome there. Uh, winner at Michigan. He was a winner uh, at Stanford. Wherever Harbaugh lands, he's going to be a winner. I believe that. His stock is so fucking high right now. Can you imagine having that type of, um, uh, you know, charisma where you're, uh, you, you have the ability to basically name how, uh, say how much money you're going to earn? Linda says Saban seven, Scumball one. Yes, that's true. But Harbaugh has terrific success in the NFL. Saban, if you remember, a a lot of people forget this because it was so horrible. Saban coached the Miami Dolphins, and it was a absolute disaster okay so Harbaugh has that over Saban and at the end of the day let's be honest here the only reason why Saban has ever been successful at coaching is because Alabama cheats as bad as Michigan does okay let's get serious here all right. So I, I, I understand where you're going with that, Linda, but Nick Saban is a, is, I mean, it remains to be seen whether or not he is even a good coach. Yes. Alabama's won all those national titles, but I don't know if Saban had anything to do with it. Yeah. I know you're not going to like that. That's my hot take today. Alabama seven titles under Saban. Our uh, six under Saban, one with LSU. Uh, it, it might not have anything to do with Saban because that guy can't coach his way out of a wet paper bag in the NFL. He's shit. Harbaugh's fucking great. He went to the Super Bowl with San Francisco. He went there with Colin Kaepernick. I think he's gone. I think Harbaugh is gone. He has nothing left to prove. He wants to be a uh, Super Bowl winning uh, coach. That's what he wants to do. That's EZ's hot take of the day. Uh, All right, I got to get caught up on spots. Thank you to the Grand Rapids Gold. We got basketball on Sunday. I want to see you there. 3 p.m. start. GrandRapidsGold.com for tickets. So much fun. Every Thursday and Friday, there's $2 beers, $2 dogs. We don't have that this weekend. But uh, when the games fall on Thursdays and Fridays, you're going to get in. And you're going to have $2 beers, $2 dogs with your Grand Rapids Gold online at grandrapidsgold.com. Come see me courtside. The Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage invites you to reach out to them when you're ready to get that mortgage. 231-332-6505. Rates are dropping. Doesn't matter where you are in the U.S. Take advantage of the falling rates now. It's not the best time to buy a home, but it's getting better. 231-332-6505, 231-332-6505, NMLS number 3035. Whether, you've, uh, whether you're getting your first home, your first mortgage, or you've done this many times in the past, consider Mario for all of your mortgage needs. Thank you to TC Paintball. January 21, Paintball War number 23, the battle for the Rio Grande. Uh, local brown skin people, the Mexicans and the Hondurans, 
are invading TC Paintball. And um, there's a lot of them. So I am building up my uh, white power to take them on in the Battle of the Rio Grande. If you want to participate, I have an invite on Facebook, an event invite. Invite, not invite, you asshole. Here it is. Go there and let me know if you are going to attend. TC Paintball Easy, Eric Zancho Podcast, Paintball War 23, the battle for the Rio Grande. Respond whether or not you can be there via that or just let me know. Eric at ericzaneshow.com. Uh, Corey is chomping at the bit for me to read his article he sent. I sent it twice. Yeah, all right. I'm not that interested. For almost half the staff fired. You covered it. That's all we need to know. Congrats. Read my article. Shut up. Uh, all right. Frank Fuss is an absolute legend. Local, licensed, independent insurance agent slash broker. If you need insurance, you call Frank. Especially for healthcare.gov. A lot of people uh, have no idea what Frank can do for you. If you do not have health insurance because your employer doesn't offer it, you're in between jobs, or maybe you're self-employed, uh, it's very, very simple to get your health care. And it's not going to break the bank. And I've been tr- working very hard in telling people that all you need to do is reach out to Frank and he will get you into a, a policy that will cost you very little, very little. Uh, the government wants you to have health care, and they've done their best to try to make that possible. But the message somehow gets lost in the political translation. What they do is they offer a tax-funded subsidy for your monthly premium. So if you have a health insurance policy that costs, you know, 1400 bucks a month for the premium, you might be like, well, I can't afford that. Well, the government knows that. So what they do, since we are the richest uh, nation in the world, they pay for a good portion of that every month. So suddenly your premium is 300 bucks to insure an entire family. I'm not even kidding. How do you navigate all that? You don't worry about it. You just reach out to Frank and he does it for you. And he doesn't charge you a dime. He gets paid by the insurance company that you happen to um, sign up for. Whatever policy from whatever company. Like I, mine is Priority Health. Priority Health pays Frank for getting me into their policy. See how that works? Um, reach out to Frank at buyinsurancehere.com. That's B-U-Y insurance here. Dot com. We talked about my man, Joe Martinez, 616-516-8579. He's driving to Howell, Michigan to install everything for the tarantula farmer. 616-516-8579. Still offering the free furnace tune-up. I just sent him uh, my consumers and DTE account number so that he can get reimbursed. And this is so awesome because he comes to your place after you book him. He tunes the furnace and leaves. No money leaves your pocket. Uh, DTE or consumers pays him the 79 bucks that it costs. It's a great deal. And there's only one HVAC specialist in West Michigan that is allowed to do that. And that's Joe. Uh, Joe Martinez. Linda says, I love Joe Martinez. He's the best. And last but not least, my pals at Irvine's. Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid, and EV. My God. Number one, when it comes to car repair in West Michigan, uh, located right in the middle of town. Can't miss them. They're along 44th Street. Call 616-532-6600 to reach out to Irvine's for the first time. They've got a great website for you to look at, ervines, ervines.com. If you want more information uh, from Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid, and EV. All right. Today's asshole of the day. It would have been Aaron Rodgers, but I didn't get to the story. So I'll save that for the Patreon coming up a little later on. Yesterday, it was Taylor Swift for um, that death stare on uh, Joe Joy as um, FFK typed out. That might be Kenny's new nickname, FFK. 
Fat Finger Kenny. The FFK. You got to love the FFK. Uh, Today on the show, a Dear Meathead Wednesday, a Big Fraud Saturday. I fucked up yesterday's podcast and had to repost it. We may get hammered by a bomb cyclone. Uh, The greatest name for an athlete in the world is revealed. That's Noah Kanega. RG3 is kind of ridiculous. Jim Harbaugh and the confetti. Um, Dear Meathead. I'm not sure what else we did today. Kind of was all over the place. That's okay. Kenny says, here's a fat... The FFK says, here's a fat finger for you. And then he gives me the middle finger. Why is everyone, everyone telling me to go fuck myself? Donko says Harbaugh should leave, go out on top, go get the Super Bowl and be done. (laughs) Corey says, I'm having a hissy. Joe Martinez gives me the finger. Everybody's telling me to fuck off. Uh, All right. Two assholes of the day. Uh, RG3 for stupid video edits and the FFK. You are the assholes of the day brought to you by TC Paintball. Other than that, I'm going to leave it right there. You have a great rest of your day. And I will talk to you on the Patreon bonus podcast. On the Patreon bonus podcast... I have a teacher who's having sex with one of the students again, but I think that they they should let her off the hook and set her free. That should tell you about her appearance. Details of uh, Aaron Rodgers and his response to Jimmy Kimmel on the Pat McAfee show and more on the Epstein files. All that coming up on the Patreon bonus podcast. Till then, thank you so much, and bye-bye.